Captain Chase Sully strode into the Starlight Tavern, his worn boots thudding against the grimy metal floor. The dim, smoky interior was a welcome respite from the harsh neon glare of the Gafira Station's promenade. He made his way to the bar, nodding to a few familiar faces, a grizzled freighter pilot nursing a luminescent blue concoction, a pair of off-duty Marines engaged in a heated game of hollow chess. As he settled onto a stool, the bartender, a burly man with a shaved head and a cybernetic eye, slid a frosty mug of amber liquid his way. Your usual, Captain. Altarian ale, straight from the source. Chase took a long pull, savoring the rich, malty flavor. He'd acquired a taste for the stuff during his years hauling cargo across the Altair system. Setting the mug down, he cast a glance around the bar. That's when he noticed the alien. It was a massive creature, easily eight feet tall, with mottled blue-green skin and a long, sinuous trunk. Clad in some kind of high-tech armor, it loomed over the bar, dwarfing the stool it perched on. As Chase watched, the bartender placed a small glass filled with a clear liquid in front of the alien. Curiosity peaked, Chase slid off his stool and ambled over. Never seen a drink like that before, he remarked, nodding at the glass. What is it? The alien swiveled its massive head to regard him with piercing yellow eyes. When it spoke, its voice was a deep, resonant rumble. I am uncertain. The bartender called it vodka. Apparently, it is a human beverage. Chase chuckled. Vodka, huh? Pretty stiff stuff. You sure you can handle it, big guy? The alien's trunk twitched as if in amusement. I have consumed the fermented nectar of the Worthax Blossom, distilled in the heart of a neutron star. I believe I can manage this. Vodka. With that, it lifted the glass to its mouth and drained it in one gulp. For a moment, it was still. Then its eyes widened. Its trunk quivered. By the seven moons of Galthar, it rumbled. This, this is extraordinary. The flavor, the sensation. It is like liquid fire coursing through my veins. Another! The bartender, looking slightly alarmed, hastily poured another shot. The alien downed it immediately, slamming the glass back onto the bar. Incredible! It boomed. You humans truly are a remarkable species to craft such a divine elixir. It is the nectar of the gods. Chase, struggling to contain his laughter, clapped the alien on its massive shoulder. Glad you like it, friend. But take it easy. That stuff will sneak up on you. The alien waved a dismissive hand. Nonsense. I am Korgath, champion drinker of the Krauthax clan. No mere human liquor can fell me. As if to prove its point, it signaled for another round. Chase shook his head, grinning. It was going to be an interesting night. Three hours and countless shots later, Chase was beginning to regret his decision to match Korgath drink for drink. The room swam before his eyes, and he gripped the edge of the bar for support. The alien, on the other hand, seemed barely affected, save for a slight wobble to its trunk. Another! Korgath bellowed, slamming its empty glass down. This vodka is a revelation, a testament to human ingenuity. Chase groaned. Listen, buddy, I think maybe we should call it a... He was interrupted by a sudden commotion at the tavern's entrance. The doors burst open and a squad of heavily armed Jafiris Station security officers poured in, weapons drawn. Everyone stay where you are, barked the lead officer, a severe looking woman with close cropped hair. We're looking for a fugitive, a Krauthax warrior accused of crimes against the Galactic Confederacy. He's believed to be on this station. Her gaze landed on Korga and her eyes narrowed. You there, Krauthax. Stand up slowly and keep your hands where I can see them. Korgath swayed to its feet, trunk weaving unsteadily. I am no fugitive, it rumbled indignantly. I am Korgath, champion drinker, and I will not be harassed by some puny human law enforcer. The officer's jaw clenched. Resisting arrest, are we? Typical Krauthax arrogance. Men take him down. The security team advanced, stunned batons crackling with energy. Korgath let out a deafening roar and charged, scattering tables and chairs in its wake. Patrons screamed and dove for cover as the enraged alien barreled through the bar, swinging its massive fists. Chase, his head suddenly clear, leapt into action. He couldn't let them take Korgath, not after the bond they'd formed over those shared drinks. Snatching up a discarded stun baton, he waded into the fray, dodging blows and energy blasts. Korgath, ow, oh, he yelled over the chaos. This way! I know a back exit. The alien turned, 
yellow eyes blazing with gratitude. Together, they fought their way through their melee, chase stunning security officers left and right as Korgath bowled them over like ninepins. Finally, they burst through a rear door and out into a dimly lit service corridor. Alarms blared as they raced down the passageway, the shouts of pursuit echoing behind them. Chase's mind raced. He needed to get Korgath off the station, fast. But how? Then it hit him. His ship, the Starwind, was docked in Bay 94. If they could just make it there. He skidded to a halt at a junction, Korgath nearly crashing into him from behind. This way, he panted, gesturing down a side corridor. My ship's in the docking bay at the end. We'll be safe there. Korgath nodded, its trunk bobbing. Lead on, human, and thank you for your aid and for introducing me to the wonder that is vodka. Chase flashed a grin. Any time, big guy. Now let's get the hell out of here. As they sprinted down the corridor, the wail of sirens fading behind them, Chase couldn't help but laugh. Here he was, a simple freighter captain, on the run with an alien fugitive, all because of a shared appreciation for a stiff drink. The universe, he reflected, had a funny way of bringing people together, or in this case, humans and Kralthax warriors. Either way, one thing was certain. It was going to be one hell of a ride. The Starwind's engines roared to life as Chase frantically punched in the ignition sequence. In the co-pilot's seat, Korgath fidgeted nervously, its massive frame barely contained by the human-sized chair. Hurry, human, it rumbled, eyeing the docking bay entrance warily. Your station's enforcers will not be far behind. Almost there, Chase muttered, fingers flying over the controls. Just need to override the docking clamps and... A sudden blast rocked the ship, nearly throwing him from his seat. Alarms blared as red lights flashed across the cockpit displays. What was that? Korgath demanded, gripping the armrest with its huge hands. Chase's eyes widened as he saw the readout. Shit, station security's locked onto us with a tractor beam. They're trying to keep us from launching. He slammed a fist against the console in frustration. Think, Chase, think. There had to be a way out of this. Suddenly an idea struck him. It was risky, but it just might work. Korgath, he said, swiveling to face the alien. I need you to man the ship's plasma cannon. It's our only chance of breaking free. The Kralthax's yellow eyes gleamed. With pleasure, human. No tractor beam can hold Korgath, champion drinker and warrior. It lumbered out of the cockpit, heading for the gun turret. Moments later, Chase heard the deep thrum of the cannon powering up. All right, you bastards, he growled, gripping the control yoke. Let's see how you like this. He punched the thrusters, and the star winds surged forward, straining against the tractor beam's pull. The ship shuddered and groaned, hull plates creaking under the immense pressure. Now, Korgath! Chase yelled into the comm. Fire! A brilliant lance of plasma erupted from the cannon, searing through the docking bay's atmospheric containment field and slamming into the tractor beam emitter. The beam flickered and died, and the star winds shot forward, bursting out of the bay and into the starry void beyond. Chase let out a whoop of triumph as he pointed the ship's nose away from the station and kicked the engines into high gear. They'd done it. They were free. But their elation was short-lived. As the star wind hurtled through space, a series of proximity alerts lit up the cockpit displays. Chase's heart sank as he saw the readout. Uh, Korgath? He called over the comm. We've got company. A whole squadron of Confederacy fighters closing fast. The alien's reply was a fierce bellow of challenge. Let them come. Korgath fears no human fighter craft. Chase gritted his teeth as he wrenched the ship into a sharp dive, narrowly avoiding a barrage of laser fire. The fighters swarmed around them like angry hornets, peppering the star wind shields with relentless volleys. He jinked and weaved, putting the freighter through maneuvers it was never designed for. In the turret, Korgath unleashed blast after blast of plasma fire, vaporizing fighters left and right. But there were too many. For every ship they destroyed, two more seemed to take its place. Chase knew they couldn't keep this up forever. Desperately, he scanned the star charts, looking for somewhere, anywhere they could lose their pursuers. Then he saw it, a dense asteroid field, just a few light minutes away. Hold on, Korgath, he yelled, wrenching the ship into a hard turn. We're going in! The star wind plunged into the swirling maelstrom of rock and dust, the fighters hot on its tail. 
Chase gripped the controls until his knuckles turned white, navigating the treacherous field by instinct and reflexes alone. Asteroids pelted the ship's hull, alarms blaring as the shields strained to their limits. In the turret, Korgath let out a continuous roar of defiance, blasting any fighter foolish enough to venture too close. And then miraculously, they were through. The asteroid field receded behind them, and with it, the last of the pursuing fighters, crushed by the relentless barrage of cosmic debris. Chase slumped back in his seat, his heart hammering. They'd made it. Against all odds, they'd actually made it. Korgath's triumphant bellow echoed through the ship. Victory! The Confederacy's fighters are no match for Korgath and his human ally. Chase couldn't help but grin. Damn right, big guy. We showed them what for. But even as he said it, a nagging worry tugged at the back of his mind. They'd escaped, sure. But now what? They were fugitives, wanted by the most powerful government in the galaxy. Where could they possibly go from here? The star wind drifted through the inky void, its engines idling as Chase pondered their next move. They'd managed to put some distance between themselves and Gephyrus Station, but he knew it was only a matter of time before the Confederacy sent more ships after them. He glanced over at Korgath, who was hunched over in the co-pilot seat, its massive frame looking almost comical in the human-sized chair. The Kralthax had been uncharacteristically quiet since their narrow escape, its yellow eyes fixed on some distant point beyond the cockpit viewport. Hey, Chase said softly, breaking the silence. You okay, big guy? Korgath stirred, as if coming out of a deep reverie. I am conflicted. Human, it rumbled, its deep voice tinged with an unfamiliar note of uncertainty. I have always been a proud warrior of the Kralthax, loyal to my clan and my people. But now, now I am a fugitive hunted by the very government I once served. Chase felt a pang of sympathy. He knew all too well what it was like to be on the wrong side of the law, to have your whole world turned upside down in an instant. I know it's not easy, he said, choosing his words carefully. But sometimes we have to make tough choices. Sometimes doing the right thing means going against everything we've ever known. Korgath was silent for a long moment, its trunk twitching pensively. Then slowly it nodded. You speak wisely, human. Perhaps there is more to your species than I first believed. Chase chuckled. Well, we're full of surprises, like that vodka, for instance. The alien's eyes lit up at the mention of the drink. Ah, yes, the nectar of the gods. Truly a beverage worthy of a champion drinker, such as myself. The tension broken, Chase turned back to the controls, his mind racing. They needed a plan, and fast. But where could they go? The Confederacy's reach extended to every corner of the known galaxy. Suddenly an idea struck him. It was a long shot, but it just might work. Korgath, he said, swiveling to face the alien. Have you ever heard of a planet called Sanctuary? The Kralthax frowned, its brow furrowing. I have not. What is this sanctuary? Chase leaned forward, a glint in his eye. It's a legend, a rumor whispered among smugglers and outlaws. They say it's a hidden world, a place beyond the Confederacy's reach, where anyone can start a new life, no questions asked. Korgath's eyes widened. A hidden world? Truly? But how do we find it? Chase grinned. That's the tricky part. The coordinates are a closely guarded secret known only to a select few. But, he added, his grin widening, I just so happen to know a guy who might be able to help us out. The alien leaned forward, its trunk quivering with excitement. Then what are we waiting for, human? Let us seek out this contact of yours and find the path to sanctuary. Chase nodded, already punching in the coordinates for their next destination. It was a risky gamble, trusting their fate to a shady underworld connection. But right now, it was the only option they had. As the Star Wind's engines flared to life, propelling them into the vast expanse of space, Chase couldn't help but feel a thrill of excitement. They were heading into the unknown, chasing a legend that might not even exist. But somehow, with Korgath by his side, he felt like anything was possible. Together, they would find sanctuary, and with it, a new beginning. The universe, vast and mysterious, beckoned to them, and Chase Sully was ready to answer its call. The star wind hummed through the void, its engines a dull throb against the backdrop of infinite space. In the cockpit, Chase Sully leaned back in his seat, 
EA's fixed on the star-speckled expanse beyond the viewport. Beside him, Korgath sat hunched over the navigation console, its massive fingers delicately manipulating the controls. How much farther to this contact of yours, human? The Kralthax rumbled, its deep voice tinged with impatience. Chase checked the readout, frowning slightly. Should be coming up on the rendezvous point soon. Assuming, of course, that the coordinates Shady Sal gave me are accurate. Korgath's trunk twitched, a gesture Chase had come to recognize as a sign of unease. And you trust this... Shady Sal? Chase shrugged. About as far as I can throw him, which considering he's a three-ton Gralaxian, isn't very far. But, he added, seeing the concern in his companion's eyes, he's the best lead we've got if we want to find Sanctuary. The alien nodded, turning back to the console. For a long moment, the only sound was the steady thrum of the engines. Then abruptly, a proximity alert blared through the cockpit. Unknown vessel detected, the ship's AI announced, its synthesized voice eerily calm. Bearing 270, Mark 1, 5, range 5,000 kilometers and closing. Chase sat up straight, his hand already reaching for the throttle. Confederacy? Negative, the AI replied. Ship configuration does not match any known Confederacy vessel. Transponder signal identifies it as the Nebula's Whisper. Korgath let out a low growl. Pirates. Chase's jaw clenched. Out here in the lawless expanse beyond the Confederacy's borders, pirate raids were an all too common occurrence. Most ships faced with the prospect of being boarded and looted would simply surrender and hope for mercy. But the star wind was not most ships and Chase Sully was not most captains. Red alert, he snapped, his fingers flying over the controls. Shields up, weapons online. Korgath, get to the turret. If these bastards want to fight, we'll give them one. The Kralthax was already moving, its massive frame surprisingly agile as it lumbered out of the cockpit. Moments later, Chase heard the familiar thrum of the plasma cannon powering up. On the viewport, the pirate ship loomed into view, a jagged, menacing silhouette against the stars. It was a patchwork vessel, cobbled together from the salvaged hulls of a dozen different ships. Weapon turrets bristled from every surface, and a garish skull and crossbones emblem was emblazoned across its prow. Attention, Starwind! A gravelly voice crackled over the comm. This is Captain Raxor of the Nebula's Whisper. Cut your engines and prepare to be boarded. Resist, and you'll be blasted into space dust. Chase's lips curled into a defiant grin. Raxor, huh? I've heard of you. They say you're the meanest, nastiest pirate in this sector. A harsh bark of laughter. Flattery will get you nowhere, Starwin. Now, are you going to surrender like a good little freighter? Or do I have to come over there and take your ship by force? Chase's grin widened. His hand hovered over the weapons console, fingers twitching in anticipation. Come and take it, you son of a bitch. The pirate ship opened fire a blistering barrage of laser blasts and missile volleys that slammed into the star wind's shields like a thunderstorm of pure energy. The freighter shuddered under the onslaught, its hull groaning in protest. In the cockpit, Chase gritted his teeth as he wrenched the ship into a sharp dive, narrowly avoiding a searing beam of plasma fire. The pirates were good. He had to give them that. Their ship was fast and maneuverable, darting and weaving through space with a grace that belied its patchwork construction. But the star wind had a few tricks up its sleeve. Chase punched a series of commands into the console, and a swarm of glittering silver spheres erupted from the ship's underside, chaff designed to confuse and distract enemy sensors. The pirate ship's fire faltered momentarily as its targeting systems struggled to lock onto the star wind through the sudden cloud of interference. Chase seized the opportunity, throwing the freighter into a dizzying spiral and bringing its forward guns to bear. Eat this, you bastards, he growled, squeezing the trigger. The star wind's cannons roared to life, spitting streams of incandescent death at the pirate vessel. Explosions blossomed across its hull as the shots found their mark, tearing through armor plating and sending gouts of flame and debris spiraling into the void. In the turret, Korgath let out a bellowing war cry as it unleashed a relentless barrage of plasma fire, the cannons swiveling and tracking with preternatural speed and precision. The Kralthax's shots punched through the pirate ship's shields like they were made of paper, leaving glowing craters of molten metal in their wake. For a moment, it looked as though the tide of battle had turned in the Starwind's favor. But then, with a sudden, gut-wrenching lurch, the freighter shuddered and went still, 
caught in the grip of an unseen force. Tractor beam! Chase yelled, his eyes widening in alarm. They've got us! On the viewport, the pirate ship loomed ever closer, its hull filling the screen like the maw of some monstrous beast. Chase could see figures moving behind its viewports, could almost feel the predatory hunger emanating from the vessel. Korgath, he called over the comm, his voice tight with urgency. Forget the small fry. Target that tractor beam. The Kralthax's response was a wordless roar of acknowledgement. A heartbeat later, a lance of brilliant blue-white plasma leapt from the Starwind's turret, spearing across the void to slam into the pirate ship's tractor beam emitter. The beam flickered and died, and the Starwind surged forward, suddenly free of the invisible chains that had held it. Chase let out a whoop of triumph, even as he sent the freighter into a dizzying corkscrew, narrowly avoiding a retaliatory volley from the pirate ship's guns. That's it, big guy, he crowed, grinning fiercely. Now let's finish these bastards off. But even as he spoke, a new alarm blared through the cockpit, a proximity alert, warning of an incoming ship. Chase's heart sank as he saw the readout. It wasn't just one ship, but a whole flotilla, dropping out of warp space on an intercept course. Pirates an entire damn armada of them. Chase's mind raced, desperately seeking a way out. They couldn't fight a whole fleet, not even with Korgath's incredible skill at the turret, but running was equally impossible. The pirates had them surrounded, hemmed in on all sides. It was, he realized with a sinking feeling of dread, a perfect trap, and they'd flown right into it. Attention, Starwind, Raxor's voice crackled over the comm, thick with smug triumph. As you can see, you're hopelessly outgunned. Surrender now, and I promise your deaths will be quick and relatively painless. Chase's fist clenched, his knuckles whitening on the controls. This was it then. The end of the line. All their dreams of finding sanctuary, of starting a new life free from the Confederacy's tyranny. All of it about to be snuffed out in a blaze of pirate laser fire. But then, just as despair threatened to overwhelm him, a new voice burst from the calm a voice Chase had never expected to hear again. Raxer, you slimy son of a Gralaxian whore! Get the hell away from my friends! Chase's head snapped up, his eyes widening in disbelief. That voice, it couldn't be. But it was. Shady Sal? He breathed, hardly daring to hope. And there on the viewport, a new ship burst into view, a sleek, arrow-shaped vessel its hull gleaming with the unmistakable sheen of state-of-the-art stealth technology. It moved like a ghost, slipping through the pirate armada's sensor nets as if they didn't even exist. In the flesh, Chase, my boy! Sal's voice boomed over the comm, filled with its usual roguish cheer. Looks like you boys could use a hand. Lucky for you, I brought some friends of my own. And with that, the stealth ship opened fire its weapons cutting through the pirate fleet like a scythe through wheat. Explosions blossomed in its wake, ships spinning away, trailing flames and debris. In the Starwind's cockpit, Chase let out a disbelieving laugh, his heart soaring with sudden wild hope. They were saved. Against all odds, at the eleventh hour, they were saved. But even as relief washed over him, a nagging question tugged at the back of his mind. How had Sal known they were in trouble? And more importantly, what price would he demand for this miraculous rescue? The star wind drifted through space, nestled in the protective shadow of Shady Sal's stealth ship. In the freighter's small but comfortable lounge, Chase and Korgath sat across from their unlikely savior, nursing mugs of steaming Rajelian spiced tea. Sal leaned back in his seat, his ample belly straining against the confines of his gaudy floral print shirt. He was a Grolaxian, a race known across the galaxy for their shrewd business acumen and somewhat flexible moral compass. With his beady eyes, bulbous nose, and perpetually sweaty brow, Sal looked every inch the stereotypical black market dealer. So, Chase said, breaking the silence, not that we're not grateful for the rescue, Sal, but how did you know we were in trouble? The Grolaxian chuckled, a sound like boulders grinding together. Come on, Chase. You think I'd send you off to meet one of my contacts without keeping an eye on you? I've got a reputation to maintain, after all. Korgoth leaned forward, its yellow eyes narrowing. And what of this contact? Will they still be willing to meet with us, after all this... excitement? Sal waved a dismissive hand. Bah! A little pirate attack is nothing to worry about. My contact's used to dealing with far worse. 
Trust me, they'll be there. Chase took a sip of his tea, savoring the spicy sweet flavor. I hope you're right, Sal. We've come too far to turn back now. The Grolaxian's expression softened just for a moment. I know, Chase. Believe me. I know. You boys are chasing a dream, and I respect that. Hell, I admire it. Not many folks have the guts to go up against the Confederacy like you're doing. He leaned forward, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. But I gotta warn you, the path to sanctuary ain't an easy one. There's dangers out there, things even I don't fully understand. You sure you're ready for that? Chase exchanged a glance with Korgath, saw the determination burning in the Krauthax's eyes. They'd come this far together, face down the Confederacy in a pirate armada. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them the same way, side by side as friends and allies. We're ready, Chase said, his voice ringing with conviction. Whatever it takes, we'll find sanctuary. We have to. Sal nodded, a smile creasing his fleshy face. Then let's get you to that meeting. Your destiny awaits, boys. For better or for worse. The stealth ship and the star wind soared through the void, two tiny specks against the infinite canvas of space. Ahead of them, the unknown beckoned a vast, uncharted expanse, filled with wonder and danger in equal measure. But Chase and Korgath felt no fear, only a sense of exhilaration, of purpose. They were on a mission, a quest for a better life, a new beginning, and nothing, not the Confederacy, not pirates, not the very fabric of the universe itself would stand in their way. As the ships hurtled onwards, Chase found himself thinking of an old Earth saying, one that seemed particularly apt in this moment, Fortune favors the bold. He smiled, feeling the weight of Korgath's comforting presence beside him, the solid reliability of Sal at their back. Yes, he thought, fortune favors the bold. And they were nothing if not bold. The planet was a bleak, desolate thing, its surface a patchwork of jagged rock formations and vast yawning chasms. Thin wisps of toxic-looking fog drifted across the landscape, and the sky above was a sickly greenish-gray, as if the very atmosphere was diseased. Charming place, Chase muttered, as the star wind settled onto a rocky outcropping, its landing gear sinking into the crumbling stone. You sure this is the right spot, Sal? The Grolaxian, seated beside him in the cockpit, nodded. Coordinates match up. This is where my contacts said to meet. Korgath, hunched in the seat behind them, let out a low growl. I mislike this human. This world feels wrong as if the very ground beneath us is tainted by some ancient, unspeakable evil. Chase felt a shiver run down his spine at the Krauthax words. Korgath wasn't prone to flights of fancy or superstitious dread. If the alien warrior felt uneasy, there was likely a very good reason. Still, they'd come too far to turn back now, stealing himself. Chase rose from his seat, checking the blaster at his hip. Well, let's not keep our mysterious friend waiting. Sal, you coming with? The Grolaxian shook his head, his jowls quivering. I'll stay with the ship, if it's all the same to you. Keep the engines warm, just in case. Chase nodded, unsurprised. For all his bluster and bravado, Sal was a businessman first and foremost. He'd done his part in getting them here. The rest was up to Chase and Korgath. The two of them made their way down the Starwind's ramp, emerging into the harsh, unforgiving landscape. The air was thin and bitterly cold and each breath felt like a knife in Chase's lungs. Reminds me of home, <laughs> Korgath rumbled, its tone almost wistful. The Kralthax homeworld is a harsh and unforgiving place, not unlike this. It breeds strength, resilience. Chase glanced at his companion, seeing the alien in a new light. For all their differences, he and Korgath were not so dissimilar. They were both survivors forged in the crucible of adversity. A flicker of movement caught Chase's eye and he tensed, his hand dropping to his blaster. There, emerging from the swirling mist, was a figure, tall and slender, clad in a hooded robe the color of midnight. Chase Sully, the figure said, its voice a sibilant whisper that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. And Korgath of the Kralthax. I have been expecting you. Chase stepped forward, his heart pounding in his chest. Then you know why we're here. We seek the path to sanctuary. The hooded figure inclined its head. Indeed, but the path you seek is fraught with peril. Are you certain this is what you desire? Korgath growled, low and menacing. 
We have not come this far to be dissuaded by cryptic warnings, creature. Tell us what we wish to know, or stand aside. The figure seemed to glide forward, closing the distance between them in an instant. Up close, Chase could see nothing beneath the hood save a pair of glowing amber eyes. Very well, the figure whispered, but know this, the key to sanctuary lies not in any star chart or hidden coordinate. It lies within yourselves, in the strength of your convictions and the purity of your hearts. It raised a slender, long-fingered hand, pointing to a narrow winding path that led into the heart of a looming mountain range. Follow the path, face the trials that await you, prove yourselves worthy, and the way to sanctuary shall be opened. With that, the figure seemed to dissolve, fading into the mist as if it had never been. Chase and Korgath exchanged a glance, a silent communication passing between them. This was it, the final leg of their journey. Together they set off down the path, their footsteps echoing in the eerie stillness. The trail was treacherous, winding along narrow ledges and over yawning chasms. More than once, Chase felt his heart lurch as a loose stone crumbled away beneath his feet, sending him teetering on the edge of oblivion. But always Korgath was there, a steadying hand on his shoulder, a solid presence at his back. The Kralthax's strength and surety were a comfort, a reminder that Chase was not alone in this. Hours passed, or perhaps days. Time seemed to have little meaning in this strange, otherworldly place. The path wound ever upwards into the heart of the mountains, and the air grew thinner and colder with each step. And then at last they emerged onto a wide, flat expanse, a plateau nestled among the jagged peaks. And there, rising before them, was a sight that stole the breath from Chase's lungs and brought tears to his eyes. A city, a vast, sprawling metropolis, its towers and spires gleaming in the pale light of a distant sun. It was unlike anything Chase had ever seen, a perfect fusion of organic curves and sleek, high-tech angles. And over it all, shimmering in the air like a mirage, was a single word, sanctuary. Korgath let out a long, slow breath, its trunk quivering with emotion. We made it, human. Against all odds, we made it. Chase could only nod, his throat too tight for words. They had done it. They had found the legendary hidden world, the one place in all the galaxy where they could be truly free. But even as joy and relief surged through him, a flicker of unease stirred in Chase's gut. The hooded figure's words echoed in his mind, prove yourselves worthy and the way to sanctuary shall be opened. What trials awaited them in this city of wonders? What challenges would they have to face to truly earn their place in this fabled haven? As if in answer to his unspoken questions, a figure emerged from the city gates. A tall, regal-looking humanoid clad in shimmering robes of silver and gold. It raised a hand in greeting, and its voice rang out across the plateau, clear and commanding. Welcome, travelers, to Sanctuary. You have passed the first test in finding your way here, but your journey is not yet over. If you wish to make this city your home, you must first prove your worth. The figure gestured to the city behind it, its eyes glinting with a challenge. Enter and face the trials that await you. Succeed and sanctuary shall be yours. Fail and you shall be cast out, never to return. Chase felt Korgath's hand clasp his shoulder, felt the Kralthax's strength and determination flowing into him. They had not come this far to be turned away at the gates of paradise. Together they stepped forward, ready to face whatever trials lay ahead. For in each other, they had found something more precious than any hidden world or secret sanctuary. They had found friendship, loyalty, and an unbreakable bond. And with that, they could face anything the universe threw at them. The city gates loomed before them, a portal to a new life, a new beginning. Chase took a deep breath, feeling the weight of destiny settling on his shoulders. It was time, time to prove their worth, to claim their place in the annals of legend. Time to embrace their destiny and step into the unknown. With a final determined nod to each other, Chase and Korgath strode forward, ready to face the challenges of sanctuary and to forge a new future together. The city was a marvel, a gleaming jewel of high technology and ancient alien architecture. Soaring spires of crystal and steel pierced the sky while broad avenues paved with some strange, iridescent stone wound between them. 
Everywhere Chase looked, there were wonders. Hovering vehicles that darted through the air like silver fish. Lush gardens filled with bizarre and beautiful flora. And everywhere the citizens of Sanctuary going about their daily lives. They were a diverse lot, representatives of a hundred different species from across the galaxy. Chase saw lithe, graceful Elori, their skin shimmering with bioluminescent patterns. Burly Craxian warriors, their craggy faces marked with ritual scars, and even a few humans, their faces alight with the same wonder and awe that Chase felt. But for all its beauty and marvels, Chase couldn't shake the feeling that something was off about Sanctuary. There was a tension in the air, a sense of unease that prickled at the back of his neck. The citizens they passed eyed them with a mix of curiosity and wariness, and more than once Chase caught a glimpse of armed guards patrolling the streets, their weapons held at the ready. Beside him, Korgath rumbled uneasily. I mislike this place, human. There is a darkness here, lurking beneath the surface. Can you not feel it? Chase nodded, his hand unconsciously drifting to the blaster at his hip. I feel it, but we can't turn back now, we've come too far. As if on cue, their guide, the regal figure who had greeted them at the gates, came to a halt before a towering structure of gleaming black metal. It was a stark, imposing thing, all sharp angles and forbidding lines, and something about it sent a shiver down Chase's spine. The Hall of Trials, their guide intoned, gesturing to the structure. Within these walls, your worth shall be tested. Pass the trials, and sanctuary shall welcome you as one of its own. Fail, and you shall be cast out, never to return. Chase exchanged a glance with Korgath, saw the determination burning in the Kralthax's eyes. They had faced down the Confederacy, had battled pirates, and braved the depths of uncharted space. Whatever trials awaited them, they would face them together. With a final resolute nod to each other, they stepped forward, passing through the yawning portal and into the Hall of Trials. The door slammed shut behind them with a resounding boom, and they found themselves in a vast, circular chamber its walls lined with strange, glowing symbols. Welcome, initiates! A disembodied voice echoed through the chamber, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. Your first trial begins now. Prove your wisdom, and you shall pass. Fail and face the consequences. The symbols on the walls began to shift and change, rearranging themselves into some kind of complex, alien puzzle. Chase felt a surge of panic. He had never been good at these kinds of things, had always relied more on his wits and his blaster than his intellect. But Korgath stepped forward, its eyes narrowing as it studied the symbols. A Kralthax mind maze, it rumbled, designed to test logic and reasoning. I have seen their like before. With a deft series of gestures, the alien warrior began to manipulate the symbols, his trunk moving with a fluid grace that belied its size. The symbols shifted and flowed, rearranging themselves into new patterns, and slowly, inexorably, a path began to emerge, a winding, twisting route that led to the center of the chamber. Incredible, Chase breathed, watching in awe as Korgath worked. I never knew you were so brilliant. The Kralthax let out a rumbling chuckle. There is much you do not know about me, human. I am a warrior, yes, but I am also a scholar, a seeker of knowledge. On my world, the two are not so different. With a final triumphant gesture, Korgath completed the puzzle, and the chamber rumbled with a deep, resonant tone. The symbols on the walls flared brightly, and then faded, revealing a hidden doorway that swung open with a hiss of pneumatics. The first trial is complete, the disembodied voice intoned. Proceed to the next chamber and face your next challenge. Chase clapped Korgath on the shoulder, grinning broadly. Nicely done, big guy. Remind me never to play chess with you. The Kralthax rumbled with laughter as they stepped through the doorway, ready to face whatever trials lay ahead. But even as they did, Chase couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning, that the true test of their worth was yet to come. And deep down, in a place he hardly dared acknowledge, he wondered if they were truly ready for it. The next chamber was a stark contrast to the first, a vast, open expanse, its floor a sea of shifting, multicolored sand. The walls were bare and featureless, offering no clue as to the nature of the trial that awaited them. Welcome to the second trial, the disembodied voice rang out, echoing in the cavernous space. Prove your strength and you shall pass. Fail and face the consequences. 
As the last echoes of the voice faded away, the sand at the center of the chamber began to churn and roil, as if stirred by some unseen force. Slowly, ponderously, a massive shape began to rise from the depths, a colossal creature of sand and stone, its form vaguely humanoid, but twisted and distorted in a way that made Chase's mind reel. A golem, Korgath growled, its trunk twitching in anticipation, a construct of magic and elemental fury. This shall be a battle of brawn, not brains. Chase swallowed hard, his hand tightening on his blaster. He had faced many foes in his time, pirates, mercenaries, even the occasional rogue AI, but never anything like this, a being of pure, raw power, animated by some arcane force beyond his understanding. The golem lumbered forward, each step shaking the ground beneath their feet. Its eyes, two glowing pits of molten fire, fixed on them with a look of pure, implacable malice. Get ready, Chase muttered, dropping into a combat stance. This is going to get ugly. Korgath let out a bellowing war cry and charged, its massive fist swinging in a blur of motion. The golem met the Kralthax's charge head on, and the two titans clashed with a resounding boom that shook the very walls of the chamber. Chase circled the battling behemoths, looking for an opening. His blaster was all but useless against the golem's stony hide, the energy bolts ricocheting off harmlessly. He needed to find a weakness, a chink in the creature's armor. There, a glowing crack in the golem's chest, pulsing with the same fiery light as its eyes. If he could just get a clear shot. But the golem was too fast, too powerful. It swatted Korgath aside like a ragdoll, sending the Kralthax crashing into the far wall with a sickening crunch. Then it turned its attention to Chase, its eyes blazing with malevolent intent. Chase fired off a desperate volley of blaster bolts, but they merely glanced off the golem's rocky skin. It lumbered forward, implacable, unstoppable, its massive fists raised to deliver the killing blow. And in that moment, Chase knew with a cold, sinking certainty that he was going to die, that this was the end, that all their struggles and sacrifices had been for nothing. He closed his eyes, bracing himself for the inevitable. But the blow never came. Instead, there was a deafening roar, and Chase's eyes snapped open to see Korgath, battered and bleeding, but very much alive, grappling with the golem, its massive hands locked around the creature's throat. The crack, the Kralthax roared, its voice strained with effort. Aim for the crack, human. Chase didn't hesitate. He raised his blaster, taking careful aim at the glowing fissure in the golem's chest. Time seemed to slow to a crawl as he squeezed the trigger, the energy bolt leaping from the barrel with a searing flash of light. It struck the crack dead center, and for a moment, nothing happened. Then, with a sound like a thousand glass windows shattering at once, the golem exploded, its rocky form disintegrating into a cloud of dust and debris. Chase lowered his blaster, his heart hammering in his chest. Korgath staggered to its feet, its armor dented and scorched, but its eyes alight with triumph. Well done, human, it rumbled, clapping Chase on the shoulder with a massive hand. I knew you had it in you. Chase managed a shaky laugh, the adrenaline still surging through his veins. Let's just hope the next trial doesn't involve any more giant rock monsters, yeah? As if in answer, the far wall of the chamber shimmered and vanished, revealing another doorway. Beyond it, Chase could see only darkness, a yawning void that seemed to swallow the light. The second trial is complete, the disembodied voice intoned. Proceed to the final chamber and face your ultimate test. Chase took a deep breath, steeling himself for whatever lay ahead. Beside him, Korgath stood tall and proud, its presence a comforting bulwark against the unknown. Together, they stepped through the doorway and into the darkness, ready to face their destiny and to prove once and for all their worth. The darkness was absolute, a tangible thing that pressed in on Chase from all sides. He could feel it, cold and clammy against his skin, seeping into his very bones. Beside him, he could sense Korgath's presence, the Kralthaxes breathing deep and even in the oppressive gloom. Welcome to the final trial, the disembodied voice echoed, seeming to come from the very darkness itself. Prove your spirit, and all of sanctuary shall be yours. Fail and be consumed by the void. Chase swallowed hard, his heart pounding in his chest. He had faced many dangers in his life, 
had stared death in the face more times than he could count. But this, this was different. This was a test not of his body or his mind, but of his very soul. Slowly, ponderously, the darkness began to shift and change, taking on form and substance. Shapes emerged from the gloom, familiar shapes, faces that Chase knew as well as his own. His mother, her kind eyes filled with sorrow and disappointment. His father, his face a mask of anger and contempt. His sister, her once bright smile twisted into a sneer of disdain. Failure, they whispered, their voices a sibilant chorus in the darkness. Disappointment, unworthy. Chase felt a sob rise in his throat, hot tears stinging his eyes. It was true, all of it. He had failed them, had let them down in every way imaginable. He was a disgrace, a shame to his family name. Beside him, Korgath let out a low, keening moan, its massive frame shuddering with some unseen torment. Chase tore his gaze away from the spectral figures of his past to see the Kralthax surrounded by its own ghosts, fallen comrades, lost loves, the weight of a thousand regrets pressing down upon its soul. You cannot escape your past, the disembodied voice whispered, insidious and seductive. It will always be with you, dragging you down into the depths of despair. Surrender to it and no peace. For a moment, Chase was tempted. It would be so easy to just let go, to sink into the welcoming oblivion of the void, to finally be free of the pain, the guilt, the constant struggle of existence. But then, through the haze of despair, he heard a voice, a familiar voice, rough and gravelly, but filled with an unshakable strength. No, Korgath growled, its voice rising above the whispers of the darkness. We will not surrender. We will not be broken by the ghosts of our past. The Kralthax's words were like a beacon in the night, a lifeline that Chase clung to with all his might. He felt a surge of strength flow through him, a fierce, unquenchable determination that burned away the shadows of doubt and self-loathing. You're right, he said, his voice ringing out clear and strong in the darkness. We are more than our mistakes, more than our regrets. We are the sum of our choices, the strength of our convictions and we choose to fight, to never give up, no matter what the universe throws at us. As he spoke, the darkness began to recede, the spectral figures fading away into nothingness. In their place, a soft golden light began to grow, banishing the shadows and filling the chamber with a warm, radiant glow. The final trial is complete, the disembodied voice intoned. But now its tone was different, respectful, almost reverent. You have proven your worth in body, mind and spirit sanctuary is yours now and forevermore the light grew brighter blinding and chase had to shield his eyes against its intensity when it finally faded he found himself standing once more in the grand plaza at the heart of sanctuary korgath by his side but now the city was transformed the once wary faces of the citizens were alight with joy and welcome their voices raised in a chorus of celebration the armed guards were gone replaced by laughing children and dancing revelers. And there, waiting for them at the center of it all, was the regal figure who had first greeted them, its face split in a wide, beaming smile. Welcome home, Chase Sully and Korgoth of the Kralthax, it said, its voice ringing out over the cheering crowds. Welcome to Sanctuary, the place where all are equal, all are free, and all are one. As the celebration swirled around them, Chase turned to Korgath his eyes shining with a fierce, unquenchable joy. They had done it. They had passed the trials, had proven their worth in the face of impossible odds. But more than that, they had found something infinitely precious, a place to call home, a family to call their own. And as they embraced, their laughter mingling with the joyous shouts of the crowd, Chase knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. For they were more than just friends, more than just comrades in arms. They were brothers, bound by a love that transcended species and culture, a bond that could never be broken. And in that moment, Chase knew that he was finally, truly home. Years passed and Sanctuary flourished. Under Chase and Korgath's leadership, the city became a beacon of hope and freedom in a galaxy too often consumed by darkness and oppression. They welcomed all who sought refuge, all who yearned for a better life, and together, they built a society founded on the principles of equality, justice, and compassion. But even as they reveled in their hard-won utopia, 
Chase and Corgeth never forgot the lessons they had learned on their long and arduous journey. They knew that peace was a fragile thing, that it must be nurtured and protected with constant vigilance and unwavering dedication. And so they stood watch, the human and the Kralthax, side by side as they had always been. They faced down threats from without and within, always guided by the unshakable conviction that had seen them through their darkest hours. They grew old together, their bond only deepening with the passing of the years. And when at last their time came, they faced the final journey as they had faced all the others. Together, hand in hand, their hearts filled with love and gratitude for the extraordinary life they had shared. Their legacy lived on, passed down from generation to generation. The story of Chase, Suli, and Korgath, the unlikely friends who had defied the odds and changed the course of history, became a legend, a tale whispered in reverent tones by those who owed their very existence to the courage and compassion of two extraordinary beings. And though they were gone, their presence could still be felt in every corner of sanctuary, in the laughter of children playing in the streets, in the kindness of strangers sharing a meal, in the unbreakable spirit of a people who had learned at long last to live as one. For that was the true magic of sanctuary, the secret that Chase and Korgath had known all along, that in a universe too often defined by division and strife, the greatest power of all was the simple, unshakable bond of friendship, of love, of love, and of hope. It was a power that could light the darkest of nights, that could guide the lost and weary home, and that could, in the end, transform the very fabric of reality itself. And so, as the twin sons of Sanctuary set over the shining city that Chase and Korgath had built, their story became more than just a legend. It became a promise, a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit and to the unbreakable bonds that tie us all together across the vast and infinite reaches of the cosmos. For in a universe of endless wonders and untold dangers, there is no greater adventure, no greater joy than the simple act of reaching out across the stars of taking the hand of another and of saying, with all the courage and conviction of one's heart, I am with you now and always. Let us face the unknown together and let us build a future brighter than any we have ever dared to dream.